Hello YouTube, I am Armed Peter, and today I am making a tutorial for you guys. Today's tutorial is another swing tutorial, and we will be making a uh, dimension converter program. Uh, you can see the final product right over here. So basically we have this slider, and we can change the value with that, and as we change the value it will adapt our uh, temperatures in Kelvin, Celsius, and Fahrenheit. You can of course do it with multiple things. We're just going to be doing temperature, but we have multiple tabs here, so you can easily add on mass and time and whatever else you want to add on. So this will be making features new component. The, the new components which are featured are the tabs and the slider. We will also be covering a new layout called box layout, and we're going to be working with a new listener. So plenty of things to look forward to. Let's go ahead and get started. So I have. A basic skeleton over here. I've already imported everything we're using, so we have our old friends, the JFrame, JPanel, and the JText field. And we have our new uh, friends, at, which are the tad pane and the slider, the box layout, and the change listener, which we'll be using all in just a second. So uh, let's start out by setting up all our variables. So the um, top of the hierarchy item, which will be uh, having all of our components is the JTAB frame. So that's the, that's the largest thing, I guess, within our J frame. So I'm going to go ahead and initialize that here. JTAB pane tabs equals new JTAB pane. No, nothing in the constructor there. All right, that's the tab pane. And now uh, the way the tab pane works is you can add panels to each um, individual tab. So the first panel is going to be our temperature panel, so I'm going to go ahead and create a panel for that. Equals new J panel. Nothing in the constructor there, and we'll also make one for the mass, which is just going to be a placeholder just to show that we can store multiple things. All right, that is our J panels completed. Now we will go and make our slider, so that's going to be a J slider. Slider equals new J slider. I believe there are uh, things you can put in here, but we're just going to go stick with the default. You can, of course, look up J slider in the documentation and find out all of the cool things you could do with it. That's basically it for new stuff. The other things, so we have our tab pane and the slider. The other things are just three text fields. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you do that on your own. Alrighty, we've added our text fields. I've just made three of them real quick, one for each temperature, and I've made them five. Uh, characters long so you can fit five characters all right now scrolling down we've initialized all of our variables now we can go ahead here and add stuff so I have I have the basic swing layout all the stuff we need for the swing and now we can go ahead and add stuff so we'll start with the lowest level first so we'll start with the setting setup temperature and we'll also do temp I suppose we'll go ahead and add our, our uh, individual panels to the James had pane. So we'll do tabs.add, and the first tab we want is the temperature tab, so we'll add a panel for that, panel temp. And the tabs, uh, or JTAD pane, is special in that we can add a second parameter, and the second parameter we can specify what we want the title of that tab to be. So this is temperature. I have a sudden fear that I'm spelling temperature wrong. So please don't judge me if that's the case. So I went ahead and added mass as well. So it's just we're adding a panel for the second. We're adding the mass panel as the second tab, and we're setting this title to mass. OK, so now we've added our tabs. And of course, at the end, we can add tabs to our J frame. Now the next step is to add all the items into our panel. So before we add our add our panel or our temperature panel to the tab we are going to add all the items we need into the temperature panel so we're going to be using a special layout here because as you remember um, in the in the little demo I showed you they, they pop up vertically whereas by default if you add new components they'll show up next to each other horizontally so let me pull up the the, the box layout documentation you can see what I'm talking about so box layout. So you can see this kind of how it works. There's individual boxes, and within each box, you can either align them vertically or horizontally. So in this example, they have the larger boxes horizontally, 
and th and then within the large box that you have them aligned vertically. So we are going to set the box layout of our temperature panel. So uh, set layout, and we're going to create a new box layout. So new box layout, and in here we are going to let's see first parameter. I remember yeah, the first parameter is which panel it's being added to. Not 100% sure why, but yeah, this this is being set to the panel temperature. All right, and the second one is the orientation. So I believe it's box layout dot. In this case, will be y axis. So that's how you'd set that up. Now, as we add things, it'll be aligned vertically because of the, because we have it set as a box layout. Alrighty. So. Now what we do in the now what we do is add all our items to it. So we'll start off by adding the slider to the panel. So panel temp dot add. Go and add the slider. And uh, something I forgot is um, we actually want the three text fields to be uh, not vertically aligned with them, be next to each other, kind of like default actually. So we're gonna actually have to have another panel. Uh, to represent those. So we'll say add, we'll call it panel values, I guess. Oft, I need to initialize that over here. JPanel values equals new JPanel. Alright, now I've got that initialized. What we can do here is, so now we'll, that adds the panel and we, got, we have to basically add all our text fields to that panel. That's basically all this. So that's something you can do. I'll let you type that out. And then once you have those added, we should be able to test it out and it should look all pretty. It should be pretty much done from the visual perspective. Let me just do a quick check. So we have a box layout. We have our slider, which is the top of the box layout. And by the way, if we since we haven't set the vertical, all everything we stretched out horizontally to fit the, the panel. That's another thing about that. So our slider will be stretched out to be bigger than it actually would be. Um so we got that being added as, as the first component. We got this being added as the second component in our box layout. But before adding the panel values, we add each of our text fields to the panel value. Then that finishes the panel for that particular tab. So we add it. And then we will go ahead and add the mass as well and add the tabs. All right. So if I head over to command prompt, um, I'll close out what we have there. And I'll you know, compile and run. Alrighty, and I have a few errors. I called this values, this panel that values, but I really should have called it like that. That's my bad. Messed up in variable there. So yeah, make sure you name the this name here matches up with the name you use down here. Alright, compiled okay. Now run. And good. It looks aesthetically pleasing. It the slider we can drag back and forth. We have our text fields, which we can add text to, but of course we're going to automate that in a second. And we can switch between tabs. Again, mass doesn't have anything yet, but maybe maybe it will with you later. All right, that is all for the visuals. I'm trying to I'm trying to get some a little faster and avoid repeating redundant information. So we got that done less than ten minutes, which is pretty good, I think. All right, now we can do the logical part, wire, wire it up, make it act the way we want it to. So we're going to create a uh, method down here which will update the temperature. So we'll call void uh, update temp. So this will quite simply grab the value from the slider and then compute our Kelvin, Celsius, and Fahrenheit values, and then subsequently store those values in the in our text fields all right so i'm going to go and show you how to grab the value from the slider so i'm going to call it base temp and it's going to be equal to our sliders uh get value method so slider dot get value this will go ahead and grab whatever the value that the slider is at and this reminds me i did forget something um we need to specify the range of the slider. If I make this empty, it might go with some default range, but let me pull up documentation. So 
get in the habit of looking at documentation a lot because you can't remember everything because I don't remember it either all right so if we look at the construct our constructor options for J slider where are they ah here they are so yes we can do an empty one and it'll be from 0 to 100 but in our case uh, my plan is actually to, to have the values on the slider represent Calvin and then we'll we'll compute everything from Calvin so uh, a more reasonable range than 0 to 100 because of course 100 degrees Kelvin is quite quite cold um, or to make it more reasonable I like to specify the range myself so this this constructor is more to my liking where I specify a low or bound and upper bound so that said we're going to make this 0 to 500 for our value all right so now that we have a range we have now grabbed the base temperature and now we can compute all of them. So I'm going to uh, create a variable called t Kelvin, and Kelvin is just straight equal to the base temperature. There's no conversion necessary. We'll we'll handle Celsius and Fahrenheit later, and then once we uh, have the values, we can update the text fields. Which I think you we we probably did this before, but I'm just going to go and write this out real quick anyway. So field Kelvin dot set text so we want the text to be uh, equal to this basically so t kelvin plus and we're gonna add a k for the units so it's t kelvin k all right so now what we need to do next is we need to have a similar system but for celsius and fahrenheit and i'll go ahead and leave that to you all right there we are uh, this is the code for uh, computing Celsius and Fahrenheit as well as setting all the texts. Uh, one thing uh, to note here is that I had to look up the equation for um, Celsius to Fahrenheit but yeah if you have to multiply by 9 fifths and then add 32. And uh, Java veterans among you will know that you have to be very careful about this section because if you don't leave, don't have the F in there you'll get integer division and your math won't be correct. So you have to add an F there to make sure you don't get the integer division error and then you also need to cast it to int. So that's something to be careful of. Next thing I'd like to add is uh, just a real quick adjustment here is that Calvin, uh, just they just use K to no notate it, but Celsius and Fahrenheit, they use degrees uh, Celsius. So I suppose we could just use an O here to make it look like degrees, but I'd like to use the actual symbol for degrees. So it's a little bit, tri little bit trickier to add that because we don't really have a key on our keyboard for it. At least I don't. At least I don't. So if uh, for those of you who are like me and do not have a key on your keyboard for degrees, this is how you would add strange characters like that. So we're going to look up UTF code. So UTF-8 is uh, the way most characters are encoded nowadays. So you've got a big list of all kinds of characters. So most of them aren't really too weird, but if you scroll down further, you'll get into some weirder ones. So I'm going to I'm going to specifically look up a degree. So I'm going to search degree, and you can see right here. Degree sign, that's what we want. And it has the UTF code 00B0. So now that we know that, remember that, 00B0, I can type down backwards slash U, 00B0, and that will give us the degree symbol. And I'll do the same thing here, 00B0. All right, now we can test out our temp. Let's make sure it's called at least once. So let's see, before all our fields are added, let's go ahead and call it right here. And that should go ahead and update it based off whatever the default value on the slider is. I believe it starts halfway through. So we'll compile. Uh, I, I've made that typo before, actually. OK, so um, the height in Fahrenheit is not spelled like height as in how high you are. I've made that mistake a couple times. I need, I'm not even sure this is being spelled right. It might not be. Let's see. Yeah. Well, okay. All right. So now it will update based on our uh, values. So as you can see, our degree thing is showing up there, nice and pretty. And the slider starts in the center, which uh, should be 250. That's correct because we go from zero to 500. And these are all computing correctly I believe let's see uh, actually I think I made a mistake here yeah I made a mistake here 
Celsius is actually minus that. Celsius is 273 below um, Kelvin. My bad. Yeah, that doesn't seem right. Yeah, that looks that looks much better. Let's see, if we go to zero degrees, well, of course I can't because we're only updating once in the beginning. That leads us to our next step. We want our up this update temp to be called every time we move the move the the uh, slider. So that requires a listener. We need to listen in on the slider's actions and respond to it. So uh, so far, we've only been using action listeners, and action listeners are great, but they only work in specific situations. You mainly use them to listen in on button clicks, but Java has tons of listeners that are used in different situations. So the situa the uh, listener for the job in this case is called it the change listener. So we're listening in on changes. So we're gonna go ahead and have our um, dimension converter implement our change listener. So change listener and then we have to of course add a listener to our slider so let's see down here right here before we add the slider let's go ahead and add a listener to it doesn't necessarily need to be before it that's just the habit I like to do when when I add it I like to be completely finished with it I don't like to have any extra things there so our slider we need to add a listener so we're going to add change listener send a spy a listener over to slider and when it has information report back to me this okay so add a listener to it and have it report back to this and when it reports back to this it needs to call the default uh, or the default method specified in the listener okay so let's find out uh, what that method is so if I look up change listener let's see what that is uh, this is what we want to implement state changed all right we'll go ahead and add that so that was avoid state changed in camel case and then as the parameter it takes a change event we'll call it EBT all right so now what we want to do is we want to basically whenever this is called we want to call this but I'm gonna go do a little bit extra here just it's unnecessary. It's overkill, but I think it'll be good to have to get into. So, we want to find out who triggered this method. Which object was performing a change and, and invoked a response? I guess. So we're going to create an object, call it source or src, and the way we're going to uh, figure out who that was, we're going to type down ebt dot get source. All right. So that'll tell us who did this. Thing. and then if the person did it if the source is equal to our slider if the slider is the thing that did this then we want to update temperature so yeah in case you have more sliders then you might want to have um, more listeners or you want might want to check for who called it because after all you could be listening on multiple sliders okay uh, I believe that is the end of the tutorial let's go ahead and run it and uh, see what happens. Oh, oh, oh. State changed. Cannot implement state change listener. Attempting to assign weaker access privileges was public. Okay. Needs to be public. I was attempting to assign weaker access privilege. I did not make my met this method privilege enough. It wasn't privileged privilege enough to get be implemented. All right. So if I drag it, it works. It works. Brilliant. All right. Uh, so uh, that's pretty much all for the tutorial. I recorded it hoping to be shorter than the, la than my, the one I recorded two years ago, but that didn't quite work. I think it's actually ended up being longer. I, as you make videos longer, you become more comfortable rambling and, I don't know, tend to enjoy it more. So possible things you might want to do to add on to this to practice more. Uh, add some more tabs. First off, you can populate this mass tab, which can work between different masses, you know, kilograms and newtons and all that. Can you add some more tabs? You know, there's plenty of units. Uh, let's see, time, distance, all kinds of stuff that you can play with. Um, if you want to do some more stuff, let's see, you can make some adjustments to the text fields. One issue right now is that 
I can just change them, which doesn't make any sense. Uh, so one way you can fix that is you could look into the text field documentation and find out how do you lock them, because there's a way to do that. You can freeze them to make sure they cannot be edited. So that's one thing you can do. The other thing you can do is you can find a listener, use a specific type of listener, which you can find out. Use the listener to listen in on when I make changes. So if I, if I change that to zero, you can make these automatically update based off that. So that's another thing you do. That Those are the two ways you can fix that. And then if you're still bored after doing all that, I have an alternate program. Let me see if I can remember the name of it. Actually, I don't think I remember the name of it. It is called Java Dim Analysis is what I named it. And basically here I have some more sliders which are specified um, using some different parameters. You can look into the constructors and methods in the slider to see what you can do to add numbers along it and whatnot. And so what this does is when I drag along one slider, it actually changes the other ones. So this is good because you can visually see that Fahrenheit changes a lot faster than the other ones. And you can easily see that Celsius and Kelvin are just related. They go up at the same pace. All right, that is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know what you think. And uh, you can expect two more swing videos, so look forward to that.